think everyone based on what I'm seeing in terms of participants. Um, so why don't we go ahead and uh, and get started? Let me uh, let me read a little bit of a preface again since we're doing this via WebEx. Based on the public health emergency emergency declared by the governor and guidelines for public gatherings set out by the Department of Health. Uh, the Environmental Improvement Board is holding its September 25th, 2020 regularly scheduled meeting virtually uh, using the WebEx platform. Um, as we've seen, please try to mute yourself until you wish to speak. That will minimize uh, background noise. Uh, the meeting will be recorded and posted on the board's website as soon as practical afterwards. And with that, uh, if we could do a roll call of the board members, please. Yes, sir. We'll start the roll call at I see 102. Member Bitzer. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Member Cates. Member Duval. I, I see him on there. Member Duval. Moving on. Member oh. Garcia. Here. Member Sweena. Present. Member Trujillo Davis. Here. Member Duval, are, are you, can you hear us? He can. I don't know. I just got a message saying his sound is not working. And he's trying to sort it out, but he is here. Okay, and Chair Volkerding, you are here. I am here. Looks like you have a full house. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, agenda item two is to approve the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. All right. Uh, and I second. Great, we have a first and a second. Any discussion? Uh, if not, um, I'm trying to see. We don't have video for everyone. I guess uh, a quick roll call vote um, to approve. Yes. Approving the agenda. Member Bitzer? Yes. Member Cates? Yes. Member Duval? Okay, he can't hear us. Member Garcia? Yes. Member Sweena? Yes. Member Trujillo Davis? Yes. Chair Volker Ding. Yes. All right. Motion carries. We the agenda is approved. How were the uh, public notice requirements met for the meeting? The public notice requirements were met by posting the meeting date and time and the agenda on the Environmental Improvement Board website. It was all, the agenda was also distributed to the EIB electronic distribution list. Thank you very much. Um, next item is the approval of our uh, meeting minutes from June 26th of 2020. Is there a motion? All right, uh, Ms. Garcia second, I mean, uh, made the motion and Mr. Bitzer seconded. Um, if we can go ahead and do a roll call vote as well for that. Yes. Member Bitzer? Yes. Given. <laughs> Member Cates? Yes. Member Duval? Can hear Present. us? Yay, okay. Yes. Member Come Garcia? On. Yes. Member Sweena? <laughs> Member Sweena? Oh, did I hear you? Okay. Member Trujillo Davis? Yes. And Chair Volkerding. And Chair, uh, Chair you're, you're, you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> you can see me talking, but couldn't hear anything. I, I'm All sorry, right. I'm Thank assuming you. you're approving the minutes, so there okay. you go. Uh, motion is approved. Um, item five is public comment unrelated to the agenda item. 
looking at the list, I don't see anyone not related to the agenda item here um, and not hearing anyone. We will move on to item six, uh, EIB 20-55, petition to amend 11.5116 NMAC of the Occupational Health and Safety Regulations and request for hearing. And I will turn it over to the department. Uh, Joshua Spencer, Assistant General Counsel for the New Mexico Environment Department, uh, accompanied by my client, Mr. Robert Genoway. Great. And I believe Ms. Mia, I'm going to mess up her name, Mia Napolitano is with us as well as co-counsel in this matter. Right. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank the board for making yourself available. I know these are difficult times to deal with with COVID-19 and uh, um, actually applying with the um, Open Meetings Act is difficult. So I want to thank you for your time and making yourselves available to us. Uh, also, I want to thank Ms. Solera, Solaria and Ms. Jones as well for answering my numerous questions and dealing with my multiple emails. So uh, I want to thank them as well. Um, may it please the, the committee, I, I, we brought a petition to amend 11.5.1.16 of the New Mexico Administrative Code uh, requiring a permanent amendment to that code in order to allow for uh, employers to report positive COVID-19 cases of their employees. Uh, this is a permanent rule that is going to supplement, actually, uh, it's going to um, the, the the board put through a, a, an emergency amendment on August 25th. It became active. Unfortunately, that amendment is going to expire on December 3rd or 4th, depending on the accounting. That uh, <clears throat> this petition is and the subsequent attachment A is to permanently amend the rule to allow for that continued coronavirus. Um, reporting requirement for employers and a four hour uh, reporting requirement from the time of notice for those employers. Uh, we know that this is a, uh, a vital public health emergency and the novel coronavirus is affecting our employers as well as employees throughout the state and is a serious risk for their safety and for their safe work environment. Um, I can go into further details regarding the statutes that were involved with it, and, and I'd be happy to do so, but generally speaking, we're moving to permanently amend the uh, the rule in order to encapsulate the emergency amendment and provide for reporting going on in the future. Is there any questions? Member Bitzer. Are there uh, penalties for failure to comply associated with this uh, order? Uh, no, there's none contemplated in the uh, the act, uh, the uh, the amendments as it is right now. Um, the it's there's a spawn off from the amend the uh, NMA the, the statute that re requires reporting for. Um, Fatalities, injuries, and hospitalizations. This is just another part of that with uh, serious injuries or serious illnesses. Neither that statute or this code has any kind of penalty requirements in it yet. Mr. Genoway could definitely speak to whether or not there would be a citation involved or an investigation involved if someone were not to comply with it. And I believe that is contemplated, but it's not specifically written into the rule or to the statute. And I might want, if I can interrupt, sorry, this is uh, uh, John Volkerding, and might want Carla to chime in as well. That's getting into, I think, the actual uh, petition itself as opposed to request for hearing. And so I, that question might be better served during the hearing as opposed to now. Um, and I couldn't say it better than Chair Volkerding already expressed it. So not to stifle any questions, are there any more questions from the board? <laughs> My, and I think, I don't unfortunately have the petition right in front of me, but was the date requested for our December date or December meeting? 
Yes, sir. Uh, and that's the closest time that we have, and it puts a, uh, uh, a time constraint on here that is is very interesting for both the department as well as for uh, commission. Uh, the December dates normally that you would have your meeting falls on December twenty fifth. Yeah. And of, of course, that's being a national holiday. I don't know if you're going to move your meeting ahead or behind or uh, however that may or to a different day and not a Friday. But um, like I said, the emergency amendment is going to expire on December 4th. And because of the time frames of reporting and for us to be able to give notice, public notice of the uh, the proposed amendment and in the public hearing notice that we can't do it any sooner than probably the, the uh, I, I believe the date is the 18th, 18th. Uh, which would be the previous Friday because of the time constraints with the um, emergency minute expiring and this the time frame for giving notice. So um, there's going to be a little lap, a little gap there as it is right now. We do have contingencies uh, being discussed as far as taking care of the time frame between the emergency amendments uh, being uh, expiring and the time until we can get the rule actually applied, whatever that final rule may be. Okay, perfect. That that was would have been my follow up question is what's the the earliest we can do it. Uh, and then do you know approximately how long of the again, I don't have your your petition right in front of me. So I know normally it says, but how long of a hearing we're expecting. Uh, we've requested 6 hours. We are optimistic that won't be necessary. But okay. uh, the, we, the public comment is the unknown portion here. So right. we wanted to give the public enough time an hour or two as any. Uh, as as may be fit, the uh, the hearing officer would uh, apply, but I think six hours is probably the very top that we could possibly need. Okay, that's all the questions I have. Uh, any other board member questions? Yes, Ms. Davis. Um, I was kind. Of, I, I thought this was kind of interesting, so I was wondering if there's any other states considering. Um, a rule change like this, and if uh, on a national level, OSHA is considering uh, considering this as well. Uh, that's a very good question. I, I do believe we will be, if not the very first, one of the first to uh, contemplate a an action like this. The reporting requirement, the OSHA, the federal OSHA has gone into the effect as in we already have this covered by these certain rules. So they're just applying the rules that they currently have in place as requiring that reporting requirement, but they're not specific as this would be. Uh, this deals ex exclusively with this COVID-19, this coronavirus, this standard coronavirus. So it's not something that the federal OSHA has done. Uh, and I have not seen a state uh, do this kind of rulemaking either. It is something that pops up though on our uh, research websites. And, and if I understand correctly, you're uh, wanting to make this a permanent amendment to the uh, to the regulation. Yes, the what, what permanency with the regulation too. It may be you know deleted at some point in time when the novel coronavirus, uh, this COVID nineteen virus, this pandemic, exhausts itself. Um, it, it, so it may be deleted after that time, but even if the public health emergency were to expire, the reporting requirement we'd like to have in order to do the data sets. So if something like this to re, were to reoccur, we could have kind of a, a skeletal outline of what would need to be done for a regulation for the next pandemic should one happen. Okay, thank you for answering my questions. I appreciate it. Any additional board member questions? Um, it sounds like I don't have a calendar. December 18th might be an or either that or the early part of the of the next week before the 25th. The 25th obviously won't work. Um, how are people scheduled for the 18th if we were to do that? Or is there another date that okay? I have one thumbs up. Um, two. All right, so we got three more. <laughs> all right, all right. So thank you. I think everyone has now. I appreciate that. Uh, so let me, and then I guess one other question for the board. Does anyone want to be the hearing officer on this one? <laughs>
Come on. Don't even jump at it. I mean. Uh, I'll volunteer. Oh, awesome. Thank you. So then I will make a motion that we uh, schedule this petition for hearing on. Um, lost my train of thought. I apologize. Schedule the hearing for December 18th, starting at 9 a.m. with uh, Member Garcia serving as the hearing officer. I second. All right. Any additional discussion? All right. Um, all in favor, and, and we'll do a roll call vote too. Okay, roll call vote. Member Bitzer? Yes. Member Cates? Member Cates? Yes. Member Duval? Yes. Member Garcia? Yes. Member Sweena? Yes. Member Trujillo Davis? Yes. And Chair Volkerding? Yes. There you go. Thank you. Uh, so we're, we're scheduled for that date. Um, I guess our next meeting is October 30th. I don't know uh, if the board administrator, do you have anything at this moment scheduled for that date? Uh, for the uh, uh, for October 30th? Yeah. I, I will have to check and get back with you. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking at this moment we don't, if memory serves right, that this was the most recent petition we had received. And so it, it, if it remains that way, we may or may not be having a, an October meeting. Um, Member Davis had her hand up. Yes, um, I, I'll be traveling on the the thirtieth, uh, okay. so I, I don't think I'll be available. But I what I wanted to see was if we had any idea when we were going to deliberate the stuff from yesterday. I'm assuming it's November that or the earliest that we will. Does that sound about right? That probably sounds about right. So today's September twenty fifth, October. It would probably be the end of November, just based on the timelines that. Uh, are in place, yes. All right. Well, thank you. That's all. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. You've earned it. <laughs> all right, thanks. Quick, quick question. Yes. Uh, if we're going to do a November meeting, looking at the calendar, um, the 27th is the day after Thanksgiving. So uh, probably the 20th would be a more reasonable uh, day for deliberations. That, that's, a, that's a good point. And um, I guess we'll have to just see how the timeline plays out with the, the transcript becoming available, the submission of the post hearing briefs and, and the hearing officer report. So as we get a little bit closer, we'll have a much better idea if we want to do it uh, then or uh, we could always, I think, postpone it until December if we so need it. So I guess let's play that by ear for the moment. Okay. Another question from Member Davis. Yes. Yes. More, more just uh, information for me. Um, if we, uh, is a deliberation always need to be scheduled during a regular meeting, or uh, do can they be scheduled if what whenever? They, they they can be scheduled whenever, as long as we properly notice, then then yes, we can. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.